Welcome. Uh, this is Goldie. It's a very special instrument and I'm half. And this is not my normal kind of video. Usually this channel is all about video and audio and lots of nerdy stuff. And this is nerdy in a very different way because I wanted to show you um, the process I went through of having this guitar made. This is a custom build and it was a really fascinating process from from concept to actually holding it in my hands and I want to share that with you. So this is a uh, Telecaster design, T style, I think I'm probably not allowed to say Telecaster and the builder is called West Valley Guitars and they're based in the West Country of the UK. Um, I will leave a link to them below. I guess before I kick off I should say there's no affiliation at all, uh, I'm just a regular paying customer and I didn't get any kind of deal. He didn't actually know I was making this video either, so um, there's that. Just quickly, we've got the obligatory housekeeping. Hit the subscribe button, means a lot to me. Hit the bell, helps the channel grow. And um, yeah, it's all good. So the brief that I gave West Valley and Josh was to, to build a, it's a T shape, Telecaster shape. And I wanted to take you know, kind of the original design. This is, you know, about as simple as an electric guitar gets and um, and traditional as well. And I wanted to take that and in any way I possibly could, I wanted to improve the features. And that's kind of what I did. It also had to have fantastic tuning stability. There's something that I'm a real stickler for. I'm always just, I'm constantly tuning. It bugs me if I'm slightly out of tune. It had to play brilliantly, it had to sound really good, kind of on par or better than uh, a Fender equivalent. And lastly, it had to look super fancy, you know, almost like Fender Master built good. And he did it. Let me show you. <laughs> This thing is obviously blingy as, I get it. It's not gonna be for everyone, but I wanted to take it as as far down that road as possible without going into kind of gaudy uh, territory. And um, I, I like it. So I'll take you I'll take you through it now, the specs, uh, from top to toe, from headstock to, to body, uh, and just show you what, you know, the decisions we made. Were. So starting with the headstock, you can see it's got this gorgeous, um, this is just a veneer that will match the body. You'll find all gold hardware across the entire thing. We've got Sharla locking tuners, which you don't normally find on tellies that often. Uh, gold, again. I love locking tuners. I know they add weight, but um, for me and the tuning stability side of things, it's a small price to pay. Next, the neck. Now, just look at this. I'll probably pop a close up on screen, but I'm gonna show you the neck. This is um, Bird's Eye Maple, and the shape, my favorite shape of any neck that I've ever tried is actually from uh, some of the Music Man guitars. And I know that they use a lot of asymmetrical shape. It's quite unusual when you first have one in your hand, um, but I think that probably would have been a little, a little much to ask. So this is actually very close in terms of uh, the shape and depth to my uh, Tom Anderson Strat, which you can see behind me. So it's very similar to that. And then we have the fingerboard. We've got gold frets. I've never seen gold frets on an electric guitar before. So that's, I thought it was just a really cool touch. It's not something that I considered until Josh said, you wanna go gold? Let's go gold frets. So I was like, yeah, okay, gold frets. Um, abalone dots, we've got rosewood. I think now is probably a, a, as good a time as any to say I'm not a tone wood guy. So um, you can argue about that in the comment section all you like. I don't notice any tonal difference with tone woods. And yeah, as far as this, I you know I like I like 
both. I like um, darker woods. I like lighter, I like maple and that kind of thing as well. Rosewood is just beautiful. It's a beautiful wood. Um, radius. We've, um, this is again, something that I didn't think would be happening. I thought, you know, uh, I thought Josh would say to me, Harv, what radius would you like? And I'll say, well, I don't know, uh, 10. And he'll go, fine. And that's it. But he was like, don't you want compound radius? Because, you know, I know you like to use all of the neck. And um, so I wasn't expecting that. That's a fairly kind of uh, modern thing to have. Uh, so yeah, compound radius, 10 in this area to 12 up here. So um, it's it plays just like a dream. <laughs> And then we're down to the body, and I'll start with the, the actual body wood. This is two-piece uh, ash, and I don't know how long we're going to be able to have ash guitars, which is pretty sad. I can't remember, what, I can never remember what these are called, but he was like, do you want those to be gold as well? I was like, yeah, If we're, whilst we're going all gold, let's just do it. Let me know, remind me in the comments, I, I can't remember what these are called. Um, and then we have the top, and this is a poplar burl, and I could have gone any color, but I think um, I didn't ask for gold, a gold color. I just said, keep it natural. And you might notice there is actually a little bit of a burst in the way that he's, you know, finished the top. Yeah, I just wanted to keep it natural and beautiful looking. The body is also chambered, which is nice. So that adds, you know, a little bit of resonance. It adds, um, well, I guess it reduces some weight. So that's all good. Um, electronics. Classic, you know, volume tone, three-way. And these are bare knuckle. They are the True Grit, the highest output of the True Grit series. Um, and that's just because I I like it. You know, I like the sound of, you know, Telecaster, the way it sounds. It's not the, it's not the tone wood, obviously. It's just, it's the pickup configuration and the scale length and where they're positioned, where, you know, under the strings. Um, I like the sound. I like them to be a little hotter. So that's what these are. And they're not really hot. Um, you can look up, you can look up the specs, but they're, I don't think either of these are over 10 K or something like that. They're not hot pickups. And then the bridge, uh, we went for this pretty kind of low profile, slick design. It's, I don't like that. What do they call it? A soap dish style with the, the, the ridges that go all the way around. I just, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Um, so this is just, you know, as I said, low profile gets out the way and works brilliantly. Oh, lastly, uh, I didn't mention, um, binding because Josh is a really big binding guy and he was like, trust me, the binding's gonna look good. And I think it actually looks really sharp with the binding. I think it might look a little, I don't know. I think it's, yeah, just sharp with it. So I'm really happy that he kind of uh, talked me into that. So that's good. All in all, this, as you've heard from the sound clips, it's just got buckets of mojo. It plays really nicely and, um, you know, it's, it's hotter than a standard telly but um, it's about the same uh, kind of, it's about the kind of output that I, I like on a guitar, um, which is not huge, but more than a standard telly. But really the point of this video is not to show you off specs or whatever, it's to share the collaborative process of having this made. And it was just, um, it was really nice from start to finish. It was just a really interesting process. Basically to, to begin with, he said, right, you just dream it, dream it in your head, write down everything that you're thinking and we'll meet up. And so I did, and we did, 
and I yeah, went to his workshop. We talked over different options. I gave him a huge kind of laundry list of everything that I was I was thinking, and he he looked it through. And went, this is this is completely completely doable, and this is going to be one ridiculously um, well ridiculous and ridiculously special guitar. Like I said, it was really collaborative. For example, when it came to the choice of top, you know, I was into I was into Burl. Uh, I also like the idea of, you know, spalted maple, something else that's um, quite organic looking. And when it came to choosing the top, he sent me, you know, links from his supplier to dozens of different wood, you know, big blocks of wood. And I got to just sift through them and I chose this exact top. It's not as if he went, right, I'll just do a, I'll do a, a poplar, um, poplar burl top and you know you'll you'll see it when you see it kind of thing i i chose this exact one so um it was just really awesome and the same went for um some of the components as well like for example the Shala the tuners i chose these as well and and the thing with that is i got to see all of the prices all along the way so i know how much this was i know how much they were and it just added a really nice kind of transparency throughout the whole process and you know I did I, I didn't have that kind of feeling of oh god you know is he adding things uh, <laughs> too much or is he is he you know am I being overcharged or anything like that there was never that kind of feeling uh, from start to finish so you might ask why get a custom when you can spend the same amount of money and get something that's amazing probably and the answer to that is I have been toying with the idea of getting a Telecaster for a long time, but um, I've quite liked the way they uh, sound. I haven't particularly liked the way they play so much. I always find the necks uh, too kind of chubby often with most of them. I know you can get slimmer necks, but just, I don't know, just something about them, what didn't, they never quite felt right. Um, I've also found that although they are fantastically simple and fantastically good sounding. I find Telecasters on the whole to be aesthetically, you know, not that interesting personally. Uh, and I just look at them and go, well, there's, there's so much room for improvement, you know, with all the components, you can upgrade almost anything on there to something more modern. And that's going to be, I don't know, a guitar fit for today, not 1950s. So initially I looked into specking a Fender custom shop based on, as it turns out, almost exactly the same specs of this except for the pickups. You know, they, they don't do bare knuckle in Fender custom shop. And the price, uh, I think your jaw may drop when I tell you that uh, for an equivalent Fender custom shop, not master built, just regular custom shop, we're talking about four and a half thousand pounds, and that's probably about four hundred. It's probably about four and a half thousand dollars and and euros at this time of filming. So this really starts to look like pretty phenomenal value. And the truth of the matter is that I didn't want to be stung again buying an expensive instrument that I didn't think was up to my standard. And the guitar that springs to mind really with that is I have previously owned a Gibson Les Paul a standard from around 2014 and it's probably the worst guitar I've ever owned. And I've owned uh, some expensive ones, some cheap ones, and I'm just thinking pound for pound when you think about value, probably the worst. It looked pretty swish, it played okay, it sounded pretty good. But there were so many problems with it. I mean, the main one is well documented. It never stayed in tune. Never, not for maybe five minutes, no matter what I tried. It also had pretty terrible fret work, I would say. I would say the paint work, uh, there were issues. There were issues with the binding. Just not what you expect for that amount of money. Apparently, Gibson's QC department just went on holiday around the time when that guitar was built. Um, I've got a lot of opinions about guitars and, uh, you know, it, it, if I'm thinking about single cuts, the one guitar I should never have sold that I owned in the past was a James Tyler Variax JTV 59, I'll flash it on screen. That is an awesome guitar. Forget all of the, the Variax 
functionality with that. Just the guitar itself played brilliantly. It sounded great. Those I don't know what they I don't know what they've done. I don't know why it sounds so good. It's it always stayed in tune fantastically. Um, I'm looking for another one of those. I want to I want to buy another one of those. Uh, so I'm going to keep my eyes peeled and see if I can get a uh, a second hand bargain on that because yeah that was wicked. <laughs> Lastly, we have um, the price, which I don't think Josh at West Valley will mind me saying what the price is because, you know, um, I didn't get any kind of rate, as I told you. He didn't know that I was going to make a video at all. I was just a normal customer. This cost me 2450 all in, and it took around three, four months to have this built from, from conception to finished. And I should just really stress that that doesn't it, that doesn't mean you can approach Josh and say, well, Harv had his for this price because things go up and things are going up a lot. Just another quick note on West Valley. Josh has made guitars for the Vaccines, one of the guitarists, and also one of the guitarists from Idols. So he is really kind of on the up. And um, if you do live in... England or even the West Country of England, uh, it's worth getting in touch if you're at all tempted by this kind of thing. He has his custom shape, his own proprietary shape called the Bronco. Um, and again, he doesn't know that I've mentioned this. He will see this video when it goes live. Uh, so there's no warning for him and this is not an ad. He's just a great guy and he's just got a great guitar building company. So anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. It's a really different style of video for me. Um, I'm, and this is probably not going to be a regular thing, but I, you know, I just thought this is too special not to share. So that's why I did. Let me know what would you have done differently to this build, uh, and also, you know, what does your dream custom build look like? You know, what elements would it have to have? Definitely let me know. I really want to get a conversation going in the comment section because uh, I love talking guitars. I can talk guitars all day, every day. And um, yeah, let's just have a chat in the comments. I've also made over 300 other videos on this channel about you know audio, about uh, videography and lenses and uh, audio recording text techniques and uh, plugins and editing and all of that kind of stuff. So get subscribed and um, the algorithm has also chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.